After a generation of mistaken economic policies, Americans are working harder today even as they fall further behind. Stagnant wages, rising prices, and downsized expectations are hitting families hard in their pocketbooks. That's why the Economic Policy Institute developed an agenda for shared prosperity and is calling on public officials to adopt new policies to restore economic security and create growth that is shared by the broad majority of Americans. EPI President Larry Michelle describes the elements of EPI's plan to revive the American economy. You know, what's really important to me is that people understand that things don't have to be this way, that we can have widely shared prosperity for everyone, where wages rise in accord with the growth of the economy and what workers are producing. First, we can provide economic security for everybody, starting with affordable, comprehensive, accessible health care for everybody. We can supplement that with retirement security so that we reinforce the uh, Social Security, make it sound, protect people's defined benefit plans, and have on top of that a retirement plan where employers and employees contribute with guaranteed returns that allow everybody to be secure in retirement with a supplement beyond Social Security. It is essential that we reward work and reconnect pay and productivity. When the economy grows, workers become more productive, their families have to see an improved standard of living, and that hasn't happened for most of the last 30 years. We will not be able to do that unless we restore a strong labor movement where people can join a union and seek collective bargaining uh, where they want it, where we have a minimum wage, which is equal to half of that of the average wage where we have uh, full enforcement of uh, overtime laws and other labor standards so that we stop having a lawless workplace where employers really take advantage of the workforce. To get a strong recovery, to grow the middle class again, we're going to need to create good jobs. We can do that with infrastructure spending that's going to repair schools, repair our bridges and roads, uh, build out the economy and improve mass transit. We can do that through green jobs where we're going to get energy efficiency, we're going to uh, work on energy renewables that are going to be able to create good jobs throughout the economy in urban areas and rural areas and help us address uh, the climate change challenge. We need to make sure that every kid can get ahead uh, in the next generation. They need a very solid foundation uh, of education starting with early childhood, a vigorous K-12 education, access to college to any child that uh, is qualified and post-secondary training for our immigrant workforce and adults who uh, want to seek better skills to move ahead. And we need to make sure there's no racial and gender barriers to opportunity. Immigration today is a severe uh, labor market challenge. We need to make sure that everyone who's working is authorized to work. And we need to make sure that those people who are here that are currently unauthorized go through a process to become citizens and become regularized so that everybody in the labor market is working with high labor standards. Uh, this will also require that we have uh, sufficient border control and visa control to make sure that we have an enforceable immigration policy. There's no need to put pedal to the metal on further globalization. You know, we have an, an open economy. We need to work on having enforceable labor and environmental standards. We need to challenge China to change its currency policies and subsidies so that we're not losing jobs unfairly. And we need to make sure that uh, the insecurities that come from globalization are addressed in the domestic economy by making sure that everybody has health care, everybody has uh, a secure retirement, and that people are working at high wages and we're creating good jobs. That's when the globalization can work for everybody. We have an opportunity with a new president and new Congress elected this year to create real change that promotes broadly shared prosperity. Just the way we found revenue for the Iraq war, just the way we found revenue for the SNL crisis in the 1980s, we can do it by reversing the, some of the uh, tax cuts for the very rich. Uh, we can do it by finding savings in some of the, uh, the current budget and by uh, adopting a fiscally responsible budget going forward. Uh, it's a matter of political will, it's not a technical challenge to find the resources we need to uh, grow the middle class and provide the economic security that people want and deserve.